Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we proudly present our spectacular show, a podcast magic and imagination full of Disney wonder, news, and pop culture. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast with Jim Novotny and David Dollar. Hey, Jen. Hey, Dave. It's time to start the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time to put on makeup if you're Jen, because it's the Main Street Electrical Podcast tonight. <laughs> happy week. Happy uh, Thursday to you, Jen. Well, it's Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. The days all run together sometimes. <laughs> so. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. Like, what am I doing? No, I no, exactly, know. exactly. I think you were going in and raising my commission by 10%. I, I believe that's what you were doing. Uh, oh. Don't let me stop you, you know. Oh, oh, I got distracted. Are you sure that's what I was doing? Yeah, that's probably what you were doing. Well, we can get to that. Oh, okay. We get to okay. That. So we are talking Muppets tonight. Um, no, we not are. Muppets tonight, not the show, but overall Muppets. This evening, this afternoon, whenever we're recording, we'll talk about a little bit about the Muppets. That's coming up very, very soon. But Jen, how did you Disney this week? Oh, uh, I, today, I, today I am Disneying specifically by wearing my Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo t-shirt. I haven't worn it in forever. I found it of in the closet. So, and I love it. And this was like, I think I bought this when the live action Cinderella came out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. 2015? Like I found this in my closet. I was like, I haven't worn this in forever. So. My favorite of the live action movies is is the Cinderella with Lily James. I think Mm -hmm. it's, and I love Kate Blanchett as the Wicked Stepmother. She is great. I thought it was great casting. It was great casting overall. And Lily James is, she's to me, she's an actress that isn't like, she's not like a Margot Robbie, gorgeous, flawless, beautiful, Mm -hmm. but she's, she's beautiful enough to be approachable, which to me is a big deal. Like, I feel like I could Mm -hmm. talk to her at a party. Whereas Margot Robbie, I'd be like, I, don't, I can't talk to you. I just, you know, she's intimidating. And so <laughs> Lily James is great. I love Lily James. I love that whole movie. Good movie. So for me, and going along, and this actually wasn't even planned, but going along with today's theme, I've got all the Muppet Legos. It's hard to see here. Uh, there are 12. <laughs> there are 12 in the series. Muppet minifigures. And they announced it about a month ago, and they hit the stores. Yeah. And I've had two iterations of this. My first one, I bought six packs from um from Walmart. I was excited. They're like five dollars a piece, so I kinda of pulled my money together and I went and bought six packs. I was excited. I got home, opened them up, I was like, Yeah, Miss Piggy. Opened up the second one. I was like, Okay, another Miss Piggy. Good for trading. Third one I, I got was a, was yeah. Dr. Bits and Honeydew. I'm like, I got bits and honeydew. This yeah. is great. Then I opened up a Miss Piggy. And then a Miss Piggy. And then a Miss Piggy. I had five Miss Piggies and a Bits and Honeydew. And I was just like Bunsen, just Bunsen. staring a uh, Bunsen, Bunsen, yeah. Bunsen, Bunsen, what am I saying? Bunsen, Bunsen, how do you do? And I'm just staring at the wall, and I'm like, I don't even know what to do here. And I was so angry and confused and frustrated. And you, I'm like, and you sent us a picture. I yeah, in the chat. Like, I was like, this is like thirty bucks. I just spent on Legos, and I've got five of the same thing. What the heck? And so I was able to make some trades. Uh, I do have Rolf. And Uh, Beaker coming in the mail, which is exciting. I have the other 10. I was able to coordinate, and I I bought a few more packs. Um, And they're really, really well done. Like, I don't know if you can see it here, but, like, Animal has a drum set, an actual drum set that goes with it. Uh, Fozzie Bear has a a microphone stand and a banana he's holding. And it's just – it's – it's Banana. such a cool, a cool little set. Uh, they have they've had I think at least two minifigure sets of Disney characters, and I've got like spattering of those. I've got three Ursulas and four Minnie Mouses, so you can tell my luck on picking blind packs. Uh, but um, <laughs> so they're all lined up on my shelf back here behind me, which I'm really excited. I'm going to have the entire Muppet series, which is great. And so me spending the money on Legos uh, to putting put, to put on shelves that people will never see, stuff that people don't care about. Uh, it's great. It's exciting. It's expenditures that I don't need to do. But hey, that's how I Disney this week. <laughs> so we both Disney this morning because, and we're not doing a proper news segment as usual, but Disney, uh, so we have this thing where Disney likes to listen to our podcast. They know we're recording, and then they release information after we record our podcast, mm-hmm. knowing we can't come back and change things. Right. However, they must have got their times confused. I actually I emailed I emailed Josh and Bob and I was oh, like, Hey you? guys oh, okay. yesterday. Yesterday I was like, Hey guys, we're podcasting today on Tuesday at two o'clock. And so apparently they looked at it, they're like, Oh, let's release some information on Wednesday. Ha, Bob, fooled you. So Jen, 
what was the bombshells? Ah, uh, bombshells. What was the big announcements oh, yeah, that came? Shell. Two big things that came out at the Two same time. Two big things. What Two happened? Two big things. What's going that on? They came out at the same time today. So the first, let's start with the one that might not be as popular. Okay. Um, so the first thing that's probably not quite as popular would be that the Genie Plus service is no longer going to be available for pre-purchase as of okay. June 8th. So if you book through a plus or, you know, booked our package on your own you've had the option to your package or to a ticket to mm -hmm. add on the genie plus service which just sort of takes the guest look out right? right like it's already okay. on there nice and convenient and that means that the only thing you have to do is hey i'm waking up a little bit early so that at 7 a.m i can make my first genie plus selection right 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 if you're doing okay. the genie plus now remember there is a complimentary genie service that kind of that section which we had we don't talk a lot about because it doesn't right. involve the lightning lanes right? right okay so today they announced that as of june 8th that will no longer be available for pre-purchase as an okay. add-on so okay. that is a pretty bold move right like that is something and listen we've all heard the complaints we've talked about them a little bit on the you know on the podcast mm -hmm. before there were a lot of things with genie plus that haven't worked as well as perhaps was anticipated. Okay. D Disney Plus and Genie Land. Genie Land. <laughs> Disney Plus and <laughs> Genie, Genie Land. Land were uh, Genie Plus in Disneyland. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. um, right. Worked, works beautifully. It's like amazing in Disneyland. Yes. Yeah, I experienced it's that last week and Land, it's fantastic. Right? It's, it's just so like, good. So, so good. good. I mean, and just across the board, everybody is saying that. Um, right. dis Disney World it hasn't worked as well, right? Okay, lots mm. of complaints, people not getting as much as they thought. All right, like, it's true. Like, listen, we we love the idea of it. The execution, I don't think, was what anybody thought it would be. Right. So this is a pretty good, bold move. Um, and even, like, what they've said is, like, they need the ability to be able to pull it back, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I think that this is, although maybe not a popular step right now, I'm hoping is a step toward some improvements on it because you know this means you can purchase it in app only the day of okay so you get there you have everything else set you know a plan of attack because your promise store agent will give you a plan of attack hey right. this is what we recommend for your genie plus service okay <laughs> this is how we course. recommend you do this um if there are issues i mean we can't fix them we will give you like hey here's where you go if you have issues you know, the day of, but mm -hmm. what that, what that means is people are going to be purchasing their genie plus service the day of, you can start at midnight, I believe Eastern time. So if you are going on June 8th, we're going to use that <laughs> then at right. midnight, June 8th, mm -hmm. like, like you, before you go to bed, like the night of June 7th into June 8th, you can purchase that, or you can just wake up a little bit early, wake up at right. six or whatever right. okay. to purchase that. Okay. So that's okay. what that means. It just, you have to do that every day that you want to utilize the service. If you don't want to use it one day, cause like, Hey, I'm going to sleep in and I'm just going to go to Epcot and walk around and try out the booth. Then great. You don't have to purchase yeah. it that day, you know, like, so. I see one big... con to this, but I see multiple pros to this. And the con to this mm -hmm. simply is the convenience factor because people like Correct. the dining plan when and if it comes Correct. back, people like adding it on ahead of time. So they don't have to worry about purchasing the next morning. There are families that don't like the rope drop. And so they don't yeah. get up until seven or seven thirty, And now, right. now they're going to be forced to get up. To. They have to, if they want that. Mm -hmm. The pro is, I feel like, and, and, and maybe you, as you touched mm -hmm. on this, I feel like this is going to lessen the amount of people that purchase Genie Plus because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people purchased it ahead of time, not knowing if they're going to use it, using it the mm -hmm. first day and not even using it the rest of the time because they don't mm -hmm. they think it maybe it's too much. Using it, we as travel agents will arm you as our clients, as our guests, with all the information you need to do it on that first day. Mm -hmm. After the first day, if you realize, you know what, for our family, this didn't really work very well today. You don't have to use it the rest of the week. You don't have to. And it. I think it is going to call those people that don't use it during the week, that don't need it, that happen to have it, or that only are only using it because they have it, but otherwise wouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something to be said for like Animal Kingdom. Maybe you don't need it really a lot of times. Right. Or maybe you want to pay you know, for an individual like Exactly. Lane. You're like, exactly. okay, I want to pay for Flight of Passage, right. but the rest of it, I'll just wait in the line. Right, right, right. And so for me, for myself, if, you know, if maybe a small group of us were going, we're all paying for our own, I might spend $12 on Pandora and I might be willing to pay 15 bucks for Genie Plus that day to do Kilimanjaro Safaris. Make sure I have mm -hmm. that, maybe do Everest or whatever. If you've got a family of five, you may not want to pay 
60 bucks, whatever, uh, you know, $75 to just guarantee that you get the right kill to Jar of Safari, especially if right. you're going to rope drop. And you can still purchase, you know, those attractions like Pandora without Genie Plus. And so, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to put your money towards Pandora and not worry about Genie Plus, I think it's a good thing. I, I actually am in favor of this move. Um, just I've been thinking about it now for 30 minutes since I heard it. So yeah. I'm sure there's more to it than, than I'm not thinking about. Thinking about honestly, it for a little over an hour. Yeah, but yeah exactly. exactly. That's how I make like, most of my decisions, really. Um, but I think that I, I think it's a good thing. I, I do. I'm. I think this is gonna. I'm interested to see how this is gonna work. Um, exactly. For the summer, I mean, so. I and again, my whole thought is, it's not gonna be anything that is. Yeah, like we have to try something because right. in Disney World it hasn't been working. It's a, it, we it's a cluster have muffin, as we like to, to say. do something. So now we have Genie Plus making changes, which I'm excited about. Um, what was our next thing that kind of came out? Not really out of nowhere. We were expecting the news, but now we have news on it. Um, yeah, so we've been expecting to hear something about 2023 packages mm-hmm. just for a while. And tra- yep. now last year was an anomaly because of mm-hmm. COVID, but traditionally mid July is when we've always seen packages for Disney release. So we were like, and we hear mm, five days to a week ahead of time, normally like, Hey, this is when they're going on sale, blah, 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 blah. Well, with the Genie Plus announcement today, we also got word that June 8th, is mm-hmm. going to be the package uh, release. A little day. earlier than usual. A little bit earlier, probably a solid week earlier than usual. Yep. Um, slightly complicating for Upon a Star agent because we are going to be in Florida, many of us. Um, so don't worry, we've got your back. Um, gotcha. At that, yeah. At that point, um, it was it's 499 days out um, from when the package is released. So. Usually that's till like end of August. Um, mid Actually, to end I did of the August. math. We'll, oh, be able to book the math? Pa- we'll be able to book packages through October 20th, 2023. Oh, October. I'm sorry. And I always- if anybody, and, well, I had said August previously, but it is October. Anybody wants to know what that means? Basically, it's an industry rule mm-hmm. that you can't book hotels more than 499 days out. So, whereas some packages, like if you were booking, say, from Jan- date of checkout. From date, from exactly. date of checkout. Exactly. Now, like for this year, if you were booking, say, checking in on December 30th, 2022, and you were checking out on January the 7th, they would let you book that because going into January, even though 2023 is not officially out, we can't right. do that past 499. So on June the 9th, we can book through October 21st. On June the 10th, we can book through October 22nd, all the way up until usually around early August is when we're able to book for the entire year. Um, so if you're worried about Christmas packages and you're like, I got to have my Christmas package immediately. You're probably not going to be able to book anything till early August uh, for for December 31st, and for that for that October 20th date I just mentioned, you have to have checked out. You can't book anything package otherwise past that date, and it just kind of adds that one day, day by day until August when the whole year becomes available. So don't mm-hmm. people out there don't stress out that things are going to disappear. Yeah, I think it's okay. Dis- yeah, it's yeah. fine. And mm-hmm. but I mean, it's great because we love yep. to be able to get you on the book yep. so you can start planning, absolutely and we can start looking. So absolutely. absolutely. We are going to be setting some things up ahead of time. I'm sure you're going to be hearing from your apostle agent saying, hey, what are you guys looking for so that we can be organized and get you quotes within like that first week or so. Um, and, you know, if you're planning yep. to travel in January, probably getting that to you a little bit sooner. It'll just mm-hmm. take us some time to get them out. But, um, it's you know, the whole year opens up basically. Right. So, right. yeah. It's yeah, going to be great. It's exciting stuff. It's going to be fun. And finally, some news that was released, I guess, in the last couple of days, Jen. Guardians of the Galaxy. We knew there'd be a virtual queue. We And we did. probably knew there'd be an individual lightning lane. But now they kind of have well, we some speculated. specifics on that. Suspected. So, speculated, we suspected. But, we so speculated. now we have some details, Jen. What are our details? Three ways you can ride Guardians of the Galaxy. Three ways. Three ways. Three ways. Okay. Three. So the three, uh, the first way, of course, is the virtual queue which Mm -hmm. um, was introduced with Rise of the Resistance was the first one that used virtual queue, I believe so. Um, So basically that's like a lottery. You've got to have a park pass reservation for Epcot, obviously, for Guardians. So Mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. from your resort hotel or wherever you happen to be, try to get that virtual queue. Correct. The second time you can do that is 1 p.m. You must be in Epcot to get it. Yeah, you must be in yep. Epcot at yep. 1 p.m. Yep. to get it. And they've changed it from 2 p.m., which is why I had a, mi- had a moment. They've changed the virtual mm-hmm. queue after noontime several times. So right. 1 p.m. 1 p.m., correct. Now, this is a new one. If you are a deluxe guest on Walt Disney World property, mm-hmm. 
you can have a third shot for 6 p.m. if Epcot has extended hours, yes. which, you know, Epcot has extended hours occasionally. They don't uh, do it every night. They don't, they do not do it every night, nope. like once a week, maybe twice. Mm -hmm. And it's the park stays open two hours later. On those nights, deluxe guests, you get an additional virtual queue option at 6 p.m. Yes. Yep. You don't have to be in Epcot at 6 p.m. to access the queue. You do not, oh, but okay. you have to be you staying at the deluxe resort, or you'll see the verbiage select Disney resorts. What that means is like the Four Seasons or something like that, select Disney resorts that allow that. Don't think you're going to stay at La Quinta in Kissimmee and still have access at the 6 p.m. Yeah. That's not oh, how this works. It has to <laughs> so, be on site. At on site. Deluxe. Yep. I don't know that the Four Seasons qualify. Well, I just said that. I, I don't know if it qualifies yeah. or not, but that's, so like that's in terms of Deluxe. Like if yep. you're at the Grand Floridian, like if you're at the Grand Floridian, if you're at the Polynesian, if you're mm -hmm. um, just, if it is considered in the Deluxe Resort category. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, now, and of, of course, you have to be staying on property to do yes. the third one, which we're going to talk about, which is the individual lightning lane attraction selection selection yes. attraction lightning lane. Right. <laughs> so the individual attraction selection. Exactly. Lane, whatever <laughs> it is. Um, yes, that has been announced. Again, we speculated this. Yep. So yep. if you are a Walt Disney World Resort guest, so mm -hmm. you are on site at a Disney property, Correct. you can do this at 7 a.m. You can opt to go pay for the service for the guardians of the galaxy right that now of course this is limited it's not like everybody who wants to pay for it is going to get in we have no idea what pricing is going to look like right. um we know that in general pricing ranges between seven dollars and fifteen dollars from what we have seen that doesn't mean that this will not change again so um if you are not an on-site guest then at 9 a.m or whenever the park opens i should say so official right. park opening which epcot sort of bebops around a little bit um 9 9 30 yeah. 10 9 9, 9 30, 45 yeah, like 8 30 whatever, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so. whatever time of day epcot mm -hmm. officially opens then people can go in and uh try if there's any purchase left you right. can purchase the individual right. lightning link i wouldn't Chances count on that are, i wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't count. count on that at all um a couple things virtual queue does not guarantee you're gonna you're gonna get on the ride uh now if you have a boarding group of like you know nine or 44 or 61 yeah. there's a great chance you're probably gonna ride it unless it breaks if down you're a backup boarding group that's yes. when you're really not right. guaranteed right that. right like, and if you have a boarding group of like 174 or even 141 yeah. Mm, you know, um, yeah. yeah, and also too, if you're if you're doing the virtual queue, or you're doing the lightning lane access, and you get a time or you get a boarding group, you're like, you know what, mm -hmm. 11:30 is not gonna do for me because we have coral we have coral reef at 11:15, and so let me try it again. Don't do that. Work yeah. it out because if you say, you know what, 11:15, you back out of that to go in again for the lightning lane, you're probably not gonna get it again. So you know, hot tip for you as well: go ahead and have your group ready and set up in the system. All ready to go. Yep. So and have multiple people working on it at the same time, mm -hmm. and you'll have a good shot at it. I mean, we're going to Epcot as a group on the 10th of June, primarily to ride Guardians of the Galaxy. So that's main. <laughs> that's the main reason I spent 141 dollars on the ticket, and so I'm going to be upset yeah. if I don't get on it. But it happens. I mean, yeah. there's, no, there's no guarantee. So um, we'll have so, fun know, regardless. But we're gonna have fun yeah. regardless. Yep, we got yeah. some great ideas okay. for social media. So make sure you're following all yeah. of us. Just go on and follow like 28 people like right now on Instagram. So that way you can make sure you catch everything. <laughs> so, yeah. so we're going to talk about the Muppets and I am excited about the Muppets because the Muppets are a big part of my childhood. They're a big part of my adulthood as well. Um, of course the Muppet presence at Disney has been just embarrassingly and criminally under underrepresented at the parks. Uh, you know, we were, I was excited about the, the, the Liberty square Muppet history show mm -hmm. that they were doing a couple of times a day. I didn't like the fact it was on the surface of the sun when they were doing it. Like, I mean, it was so hot. So, um, but it was a great show. I mean, it really was. Yeah. It was something that, you know, I feel, really like, I feel like they could revamp that, maybe even put some shade up a little bit so mm -hmm. you can stand and watch it. But still, I'd stand in the blazing sun and still watch it. It was great. Uh, I have long been a proponent of replacing the presidents and Hall of Presidents with the Muppets to circumvent any political things going on in the country so people aren't complaining about it put the muppets in there telling the stories telling you know having kermit narrate um you know narrate the american adventure and do it mm -hmm. right i mean do it make it comical if you need to but do it right um you know or even maybe put the muppets in epcot i think that or as american adventure or whatever i've long been a proponent of doing that but the muppets 
have been a part of Disney since 2004, but they've been a part mm-hmm. of Disney history since the late 80s. And I want to kind of walk yeah. you through real quick some of the things that were going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, the, in 89, 88, 89 or whatever, Jim Henson was exhausted. He had been doing the Muppets all of his yeah. life, uh, created the Muppets and everything. And we're not going to go into the history of the Muppets themselves. That's another podcast. Right. That's an entirely other story. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, Jen, they weren't always the kid-friendly ones that you know. They actually were I... an adult troop. Do you know that? I... And, and if you watch the Muppets show, the unedited version, some of it's like, Ooh, like, yeah. I, I, I get that joke now that I'm 46 and not seven. <laughs> so <laughs> I get it now. Um, They've always had a lot of adult humor. Oh, They've yeah, they really have. They really have. Uh, but Jim Henson was exhausted. He was spending so much time on business, and he was ready to sell it to somebody. And the Walt Disney Company came calling. So he had he, they had worked out this great deal. They had gone so far to completion, they actually had a special that would air on TV on May 6, 1990, to show how the Muppets were joining Walt Disney World. And the special was called The Muppets at Walt Disney World, Truth in Advertising. Um, it had the Muppets walking around, their adventures on some of the rides. Uh, one of them had, like, Piggy getting stuck in the cement in front of the Chinese theater, which, of course, we see Kermit and Piggy's footprints there. That's how they got there. Uh, the show aired. Uh, the phase one of the entire production uh, opened up in 1991 with this little show called Muppet Vision 3D. Uh, they had a parade. They had a live stage show ready to go called Meet the Muppets. It's in the same building now that's in Voyage of the Little Mermaid. Same building. Mm-hmm. Jen, they had Piggy and Kermit walking around giving autographs and pictures for people. They were, were walking around as characters. I can't. In the park. I would I can't. lose my mind. I would just... Like, I would run children over to be first in line and, uh, like, admonish me, cast member, but I'm getting my picture. <laughs> um, so so that was phase one. Phase two was going to be bigger. They were going to have this restaurant called the Great Gonzo Pandemonium Pizza Parlor. And this is the right. This is the restaurant that eventually became the Restaurant Italiano, uh, Mama Melrose, actually. Oh, um, okay, yeah. And, and so it was going to be this restaurant inspired by famous, famous memorabilia, uh, like Planet Hollywood and the Hard Rock Cafe. It's going to call, be called The Great Gonzo, operated by Gonzo and Rizzo the Rat, where things would constantly be going wrong in this. Uh, some of the things you would see in this, they would they in the storyline, they would have hired the Swedish chef to run the kitchen. Guests could watch them making their meals, quote-unquote, live on little television monitors above their heads. Uh, they would see the food fighting back unexpectedly against the Swedish <laughs> chef. Armed lobsters would take over the kitchen to prevent being boiled. Uh, pizza dough would spring to life and attack the chef, all in these monitors. Gonzo and Camilla would be roaming around the restaurant, but they would temporarily get lost and stuck in the ducks overheads. So you'd be able to hear them as they're trying to get out. Uh, the walls of the restaurants would be decorated with memor- memorabilia, some real, some created for the for the restaurant. Um, yeah. The place would be interactive. At any moment, the kitchen doors might explode in a cloud of chicken feathers and rants from the chef. Uh, Rizzo and his friends would deliver meals to the table on small model railroad trains with cars that ran through the restaurant. I don't even know how this would work now, but that was that was what they were going to do. Um, this was going to be a great concept. They were going to have a uh, a show called. Um, Called the Muppets, basically theme to the theme to the Muppets, and now it's mm-hmm. it was going to be the backlot theater, um, and uh, unfortunately it became the Hunchback of Great Notre Dame when the Muppet deal fell through. So we had to do Notre, Notre Dame or Notre Dame stuff, which I hate Hunchback. Uh, there were going to be storefronts all along the streets, like mm-hmm. you see now, or you would have seen until Star mm-hmm. Wars came in, including Fire Station Number One, which would have had the actual fire truck that you see at the end of Muppet Vision 3D. Okay, that oh. actual fire truck would have been there. Uh, they would have had this great ride called the Great Muppet Movie Ride, which is exactly like it sounds. They would have had Muppets acting out different scenes, both in animatronic and also in video and stuff, different scenes from movies. Uh, They were going to have a Pigs in Space segment of that. They were going to have a scene, a parody to Peter Pan with Kermit teaching the Darling Children to fly through a cardboard cutout set of London. Oh, my God. Um, The Darling Children, instead of Michael and John and Wendy, would have been Janice playing Wendy. Scooter as John and Fozzie Bear as Michael, all in footy pajamas and holding a teddy bear. Uh, rat technicians would operate the awkward and obviously obvious pulley rigs and ropes to help these performers fly. It would be a series of jokes and comics. It would be great. And I didn't know this, and I know we've never talked about this. Yeah. In 1991, had the deal gone through, the Muppets would have made their way to Disneyland. There were plans to turn parts of the park of Disneyland into Muppet Land and send some of the characters on quote-unquote year-long vacations. Like, you would go and not see Donald Duck. You would go and not see Minnie. I don't, I don't know about Mickey, but some of the characters would be gone mm. for a year. They were going to change the signage on the marquee out front to Muppet Land and have Kermit's head instead of Mickey in front of the train station in the, in the flowers and stuff. Oh, my um, gosh. It was going to be great. That would be Everything, crazy. however— 
nothing was signed. Ten days after the after the the, uh, the show aired in May of 1990, Jim Henson passed away. Uh, he literally worked himself to death. Like he got sick, he would not go to the hospital because he had projects to finish, and he died of pneumonia. Uh, tragic. It's one of the few times I remember as a kid. Like being visibly upset mm-hmm. because a, a a celebrity had died. Like I was upset. I, I didn't. I don't remember yeah. crying, but I remember that just like sitting in my room, like looking around, going, "Jim Henson died. What the what?" I, I, just I mean, like I was so <laughs> so upset. Um. So everything was everything moved forward with Muppet Vision mm-hmm. 3D, which they opened, and they opened up the Stage One Company Store, which of course mm-hmm. is the Muppet Store, which mm-hmm. is not been reopened yet after COVID. It's still closed. no, still closed. Um. But everything after that was shut down, and here's what happened. Uh, if you if you listen to Mark Eads, who was an Imagineer back in the day, he says, The popular attraction, Muppet Vision 3D, opened at Disney MGM Studios in May of 1991 after the Henson family were convinced, as in Disney convinced them, it would be a fitting tribute to Jim. But after we finished the work on it, they told everybody else connected with the Muppets to walk away from Disney. We had to get rid of everything else that was Muppets connected, like the stage shows and work stoppage and everything on the Muppet Studios idea. So it wasn't even like they were just not doing, they wouldn't do it anymore. It was like the Muppet, Jim Henson Company pulled everything from Disney. It's like, well, you can't do this stuff anymore. So Disney's got all these plans and all these things, everything they couldn't do anything with. So it was just, it was done. Um, One more thing at Disney Disneyland, actually. Well, well, no. So it was done. So Disney made a licensing agreement with Henson to keep Muppet Vision in place to keep that mm-hmm. keep the stage shows so they could still sell some merchandise and stuff so it and so they wanted to have Muppet Vision 3D in California Adventure when that park opened up in the early 2000s but in 2004 Disney finally acquired the Muppets and all their intellectual property except for Sesame Street that's not part of the Muppets I mean no. you think it's Muppets they are Muppets but they're not part but of the Muppet, not, Muppet, Muppet Company right. they're part of the Sesame Street Street Workshop um, they acquired them for 75 million dollars the previous price in, in the early 90s was 150. But the Muppets had been diminished so much by then. Their popularity had gone down so much that it was only $75 million. Uh, One plan after the purchase, what they were going to do, they had this ride. And we need to talk about this ride one day on our show. Superstar Limo in California Adventure. Jen, did you ever get out to Cali Adventure to ride Superstar Limo? No, I never read if that you ever, If we ever did a top five least popular attractions, that has got to be on po- – This that ride makes Stitch's Great Escape look like Peter Pan's Flight. Oh, um, it was, cool. it, there are videos on YouTube about Superstar Limo and how people hated that ride. And so you'll have to go in and look and, and kind of see about that ride. But they were going to turn that into Piggy's Superstar Limo. Oh. But of course, they killed that one too. And uh, Walt Disney Imagineering actually said, um, they, were, they were pitching this idea. And this is kind of how we wind down Disney history. They were pitching the idea too, but Disneyland's Space Mountain be renovated mm-hmm. as Pigs in Space Mountain. The USS Swine Trek would come out of the side of the mountain as if it had crashed into the structure. Throughout the queue and overhead monitors, guests would have been told that they were about to join Piggy, Captain Link, Hogthrob, and Dr. Julius Strangepork on a dangerous space mission. You now have to deliver a pepperoni pizza to the Supreme Galactic Leader in 30 minutes or less, just like Domino's Pizza used to be. Oh my god! don't, not only is the pizza free, but the universe faces annihilation. Cost reasons... <laughs> We're now talking recession after 9-11. Most of the Muppet appearances would have been uh, just on monitors, but eventually they had to scrap the entire thing, especially with the Disneyland theme park, and all of it just kind of went away. So that's what happened with the Muppets, which is kind of sad. (laughs) Kind of sad. sad. And I I understand all of that with dealings and workings and contracts and stuff, but Disney owns the Muppets. And I got to tell you, Josh, I know you're listening. Jody, I know you're listening. Get the Muppets and people would flock to the Muppets. You don't even have to do an attraction. Just have them appear somewhere in stage shows or do a live show or even like the do the life history thing in Hollywood or do a movie history in Hollywood or whatever. Do something simple like that. People would lose their minds over the Muppets. I will tell you that like um, after uh, Sweetums. Sweetums. Mm -hmm. I do have my my picture with Sweetums. Oh, that's awesome. I, he was at an after hours event at Hollywood oh. studios. And so, and like the line to meet Sweetums was like huge. I'm like, you never I'm see sure. I am waiting. I'm like sure. that was a, that was amazing. I'm sure. Now, yeah. before we dive into the Muppets themselves, I do want to ask you about something else that's kind of, and we might mm-hmm. have to do a show on this too one day. Fraggle Rock. Did you ever watch Fraggle Rock? Were you a I Fraggle Rock girl? Down in Fraggle Rock. Do, do. Down, Down in Fraggle, Fraggle Rock. Rock. Oh, uh, with that show was it was on HBO, and I remember having HBO as a kid. Um, mm-hmm. The two things I remember watching on HBO, and we've talked about Star Wars before, yeah. it was Star Wars and Fraggle Rock. 
I watched Fraggle Rock every single time it was on. It was I saw it so multiple awesome. times. It was oh, yeah. uh, a, a goober and red. boomer and red, red with the yeah. tufted hair. And of I course, you, I don't remember the names, but of course, you had the the uncle uh, who was the safari guy. Right, and then um, the uh, the dog um, started with an S. What was the dog's name? Oh, like Samson. Uh, Simply yes. Samson. Sputnik. <laughs> if only we had a way to look at this in front of us. So. I just remember the dog and like Red would interact with the dog and like yes I I, I love you remember that, that? Show. I love I do, that re- show. I do remember that um so you had the characters of hold on let's see list of Fraggle Rock characters let's go to Wik- Wikipedia you had Gobo Moki Wembley Wembley was my favorite Wembley okay Wembley Boober cool. Red and Uncle Traveling Matt that was That's the name of the that. uncle, okay? there we go. Uh, you also had other fraggles like Barry Blueberry Brio the Minstrel the Cave Fraggles blah 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 yeah. Um, in terms of the, you had the dozers, which were the tiny ones <gasps> that always worked. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. They're always working, always building stuff, and they're always getting stuff knocked down by the fraggles. The fraggles are always eating their stuff, actually. Right. Um, and then you had the gorgs, giant oh. furry humanoids standing 15 feet tall. They were the king and the queen of the universe, but all appearances, really, they were just farmers. Pod, Ma, and Junior Gorg. Um, yes. M- Marjorie the trash heap. The, tra- the pile of trash. Yes. <laughs> I um, forgot about Marjorie. Voiced by Jerry Nelson, who also did a lot of the Muppet stuff. And you yes. had Philo and Gunge, who were the heralds of the trash heap. Um, and then, of course, you had the outer space creatures like Doc- Sprocket. Sprocket was Sprocket. the name of Sprocket. That's it. So, yeah, this is not a Fraggle Rock episode, but I had to come through and mention all those. Because now both of us are like, oh, I remember that. So, um, I know I they came that. back. They came back a few years ago with a show called Back to Fraggle Rock on HBO. I haven't seen any of it. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll go back and watch a few minutes of it, but it's just not the same. Um, but I remember watching Fraggle Rock every morning. Also, not Disney related at all, but I watched Babar the Elephant every morning at six oh, a.m. At six a.m. on HBO every morning, every every week on like Friday or something Babar. on HBO, they would premiere an episode at six a.m. on a Friday, and I would get up yeah. purposely at five fifty, turn on my TV. And this was when I was like 12 years old. <laughs> I would watch Babar every Friday morning and then get up and get a shower and get ready for school and go to school at 7. Uh, Babar. Every every week I would watch Babar. Um, like but Babar. the Muppets. Jen, there have been eight Muppet movies. Uh, of course, you have the OG, the Muppet movie, Great Muppet yeah. Caper, The Muppets yeah. Take Manhattan. Then you've got the new G, which is like uh, the new ones, which are Muppets yeah. and Muppets, uh, um, the, the Muppets wanted. Most Wanted. And then you have that that – that period in the middle, and I don't want to say dark period. It's like the bronze period for Disney animation. This is like the Robin Hood and the Aristocats and yeah. the Sword and the Stone. The, between the classics, between the Renaissance, kind of right there in the middle. Yeah. Muppets from Space, Muppet Treasure Island, great uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol. Great. And we will talk well, about yeah. all those movies in a minute, yeah. uh, singularly. But what are your history with the Muppets? When do you remember falling in love with the Muppets as a kid, oh. watching the Muppet movies? Some so, so what's interesting is I think my parents had liked the Muppets, you know, mm. the Muppets show, which was in the right. 70s. Um, I distinctly remember watching reruns growing up, probably on the Disney Channel, I would imagine, or maybe wherever probably. they were being shown. It was probably the Disney Channel, um, like with Sunny and Cher. And like, I remember watching like Lily Tomlin was a guest mm-hmm. at one point on the Muppets. I remember watching the Muppet show. But then um, I just really remember like the various Muppet movies that we we owned we were probably videotaped from the TV like you know with the VCR <laughs> like you know right. you had the homemade mm-hmm. VCR tapes and watching those movies so that was really my initial and like early history with the Muppets and then of course growing up Muppet Babies which I still count as Muppets because that was amazing yes. oh, uh, yes. Disney Afternoons I yep. freaking love the Muppet Babies and like if we one point talk about favorite Muppets I of course loved Miss Piggy I had Miss Piggy and Kermie I had them in their like little outfits and and like stuffed animals Kermie had mm-hmm. a little trench coat and his little hat of course and, Piggy had her gloves, like she was just fabulous. Um, so yeah, I had the stuffed animals. I just always enjoyed them and I watched them in all the different aspects. And then of course, you know, watch the Sesame Street, watch the Fraggle Rock as well. But it was just fun. I don't know. I just really, I really liked them. Mm. So that was I, my history. 
I love the Muppet Babies, and again, I watched this when the, when I was a kid. This show was actually on. The Muppet Babies were on from 80, 84 to ninety one. I didn't realize it was on. Oh, that was long. it eighty four? I didn't um, realize it was on. That but it only did one hundred and seven episodes, so it's only like twelve episodes per season. So it wasn't. I mean, that I probably long ago. saw all of them. Like, and it's it's interesting. I'm sure I've seen all of them. You and I both have seen all of them like ten I'm times sure. each. I'm sure. If I like, I don't remember any of them except for the Star Wars no. episode, which I thought was amazing. But if you put one on right now, both of us would be like, oh, I do remember I, I, this show. 100%. That's how that would happen. Like, and <laughs> you had this theme song. Muppet Babies. Baby, we make our dreams make come, true. come true. Papa doody wop. Yeah, Muppet <laughs> Babies, we do the same for you. Uh, just, when yeah. you rule, what's you kind, of kind of weird and you wish kind that you were you there. Were there. <laughs> just close your eyes and make believe and you can be anywhere. Anywhere. I like adventure. Muppet, I like romance. Muppet, 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 Muppet babies. Oh, and babies, and of course, babies, Nanny, which you never saw. <laughs> you only saw her feet as she walked through because you're all seeing the show from the perspective of the kids, uh, right. from the Muppets as babies. Um, Nanny was voiced by June Billingsley, which was the mom in yeah. Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. And Barbara Billingsley, not June. Barbara Billingsley. Barbara, Is that right? Like, June, June Cleaver? Were you talking about June Cleaver? June Cleaver. Beaver, that's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, her. Okay. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> I, I loved the show too because I remember singing the song uh, at school in like fourth grade, and my friends were like, oh, "You said duty," and I was like, "I know, right?" Pop <laughs> <give> you up. <laughs> so uh, some of the voices that were on there, uh, Dave Coulier from Full House was the voice oh, of Animal, right. Baby Bunsen, Baby Bean. Bean was in this show, by the way. So that's Muppet right, Vision wasn't the first thing. Baby Janice, Statler and Waldorf, Camilla. Although I don't know how Statler and Waldorf were babies in this. I don't remember them being babies in this, but uh, I don't again. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the new one, but I, I loved the original. I loved yeah. it. Um, and, like, I have seen, and this is not an exaggerated number when I say this, I have seen likely around 4,200 movies in my life. Um, there's a wow. there's a website out there called Letterboxd, and I've taken the time over the last couple of years to kind of go through year by year and just basically type in the movies that I've seen. And it's, mm-hmm. it's got a list, and it's, it's a great site if you're a movie watcher like me. You can actually go on that site, letterboxd.com, even see my account, just see all the movies I've seen. It's all there. Um, but... The first movie that I remember seeing in the theater was the Muppet movie. We lived in Texas. Mm. Uh, I lived with my grandparents, and they raised me. Um, and my grandmother had a friend of hers named Kathy. And, and my grandmother, my grandparents didn't drive around very much. My grandmother, my grandfather didn't go to the movies. So he wouldn't take me to the movies. But my grandmother didn't drive at all. And so Kathy would take me to the movies. I saw E.T. this way. I saw Empire Strikes Back this way. I saw um, Rocky IV this way. I saw a lot of movies this way. But the Muppet movie was the first time I ever re- really ever remember seeing the Muppets and was like, mm. this is amazing. And I was just – and this is before Star Wars. This was 79. So I had not seen Empire Strikes Back till the following mm. year. And so I was just all into the Muppets. And, you know, Kermit was, was my mm. guy. I loved Kermit. I loved Ralph. Um People have told me that I tell bad Rolf. jokes, so Rolf, Rolf. Rolf. People Rolf. have told me that I tell bad jokes, so they relate me to Fozzie. I don't get it. Um, waka waka, waka but waka. exactly. But <laughs> I, I remember seeing it. And I've, so I have grown up watching the Muppets, yeah. watching everything they do. I saw the other Go-go! two movies in the theater. Uh, I have the record album soundtrack for all of them. You know, oh there gosh. is a um, there's a line in the Happiness Hotel song uh, from the Great Muppet Caper. Where they talk about the whole place has gone to hell, and it like yes! as a six yes! year old, I'm like, <gasps> they curse I did the same thing. They it. <laughs> you know, um, just loved it, loved it, loved it, and so like I I wasn't a huge fan. And we'll get to this in a few minutes, but I wasn't a huge fan of the movies in the '90s when Jim Henson passed away. Of course, we lost yeah. the voice of Kermit, so I could distinctly tell. Kermit from the 80s to Kermit to the 90s and even Kermit. Now, Brian Henson mm-hmm. took over for a long time, and I think mm-hmm. David Whitmire, there's another guy that mm-hmm. took over, and he was he was he he resigned from the company for various reasons and whatever. Um, so we've had several Kermit voices, but I still remember Jim doing those voices. Um, so the OG is the OG yeah. to me, which is why sure. when the Muppets came back in 2011, it was such a big deal. And I'm a big fan of the Muppets. I, I bought Muppet Legos. I spent like 80 bucks buying 12 <laughs> Muppet Legos. And really all they're going to do is sit on my shelf on a line going, look, there's Muppets all the way around. Look, look at my Legos. <laughs> and this is my office. Nobody sees my office up here at the top of my house. But it's, you know, whatever. Uh, so Muppet thing, Muppet stuff just really just yeah. just attracts me. I, I love Muppet stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, so your favorite character you said was Piggy. Is that right? Well, it, it, day to day it changes. I, of yeah, course I love Piggy. Yeah, I kind of have the same thing. Like, I mean, I love Piggy because she was the fashionista. Like, mm-hmm. she was the diva. So, well, as I pretty sure Heather hates Piggy. I don't know why. Right. She just does not like, like her. I know, sad. but I, but I, she's not like my always favorite. Okay. Right. Because I also love 
role because he's yes. the piano player yep. to the musician and not the only one randomly he doesn't always play with dr teeth so no. that's different like i don't think but, he plays and, i don't think he's part of the he's not a part of the he's band. not he, he no he's ran- not but it's but he plays but it's like he's a musician but he doesn't right play with the, it's just it's it's funny right um but i always loved roles mm-hmm. i always thought gonzo was hilarious oh, Gonzo's like funny. Yeah, because he, I mean, he just—he's a great Gonzo. And then for whatever reason, Janice always, again, <laughs> she was a fan. I just Janice. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, it just—it could change from day to day. I loved all of them, but those were like kind of my, you know, switch based on the day. My favorite Janice moment is when they're in the great, <laughs> great the Mustang Manhattan. And they're all they're sleeping in lockers because that's all they can afford. Yeah. And they're all chattering and talking and talking and chattering. And I think this is going to take Manhattan. And everybody gets quiet all of a sudden except for Janice. And you hear hear her go, but you'll have to get your own jacuzzi. Yeah. And she looks around like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I have this this core, yeah. I guess core four. Gonzo, mm-hmm. Fozzie, Rolf and Kermit and my favorite is day to day it's like the theme parks yeah I love them all for different reasons and like your children yeah. you love your children equally but you like one better than the other based on a different day it's yeah. just kind of how it is <laughs> I, and I do love Miss Piggy too but she's not my like, core favorite one of my four she's favorite, not favorite one of your core that's um, I love Animal Animal's, animals crazy uh, uh, Zoot the saxophone player was my guy in, in high school because I played sax Dr. Teeth is great the Electric Mayhem is great I kind of like kind of like in Rolf to uh, and and some people will get this joke. Um, Stephen, I mean, uh, Stephen Chris Chapman and Michael W. Smith, they perform together, but he's not in Stephen Chris Chapman's band. He plays piano on some of his <laughs> concerts and stuff, and is an artist in his own right. right. And they'll do each other's right. music, but you know, like oh, Elton John but and Billy Joel, they'll do each other's music yeah. in concert, but they're not always together. That's kind of how Rolf right. is with Elton John Mayhem. So, uh, I agree. You know, I I, and I you. there aren't Muppets that I just dislike. There aren't even Muppets I look at and go, I don't like that one. I just I love them all for different reasons. Yeah, they're even great. the stupid ones. And like, Beaker, Beaker, Beaker. How can you forget Beaker? Beaker is great. I mean, just the what he does with the the beeps and the and the meeps and the interactions, me 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 me, you know, and um in Muppet Vision 3D. Well, of course, the effects are very temporary. <laughs> <Jesus is so laughs> <great. laughs> it's my favorite part of the attraction. Uh, I have a Beaker. Um, I, I have a Beaker beanie that has the Beaker eyes and the head on top. Oh, with it. oh it's it's. I want it to be cold just so I can wear that beanie. <laughs> Yeah. Beaner, it's great. Um, let's talk about the movies. Now, there are eight films yeah. that have come out in the Muppet history. Uh, and these films are starting with earliest to latest in 1979, the Muppet movie. Mm-hmm. 91 or 81 was The Great Muppet Caper. Mm-hmm. The Muppet Staying Manhattan was 84. The Muppet Christmas Carol was 92. Muppet Treasure Island was 96. Muppets from Space was 99. The Muppets was 2011. And The Muppets Was Wanted was 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, now, there's a progression of, I guess, success in these because, of course, again, we talk about the big three. The first three were, were massive hits. Um, yeah. For the box office at the time, anyway, I think the first one made like 60, $65 million in 1979, which was really it's good. huge. Uh, the other yeah. two didn't do quite as well, but they were still pretty legendary. Muppets, Muppet Christmas Carol, Treasure Island, Muppets from Space, not as much. Muppets from Space pulled in like $22 million, so it was not It was a not hit. a big hit. Um, big Muppets hit. came back in 2011, and it was, it was written – by Jason Siegel and Nicholas Stoller. Jason Siegel had said that he he's a lifelong Muppet fan as well, that he wanted to yeah. do something that honored the Muppets, that made the Muppets popular again. So he he told the story of the Muppets uh, and and he brought it back. He he wrote the Muppets out and everything, and he helped he helped produce the show. It was directed by James Bobin, who also did the sequel to it, and it was a massive hit. 165 yeah. million dollars at the box office. People went nuts for this movie because mm-hmm. it was Muppets done right, which was awesome. Oh, it was beautiful. so good. It was beautiful. So, now you have not seen Muppets from Space, and yeah. is it Treasure Island you haven't seen? No, Muppets Most Wanted. Those are the two. You no, haven't Muppets. Seen. Right, right. Okay. I, and I wanted to see Most Wanted. I don't remember like what. And just it's one of those things. It's like I always meant right. to go see it, and then and I never. And then I heard like, well, it's not as good as you know, like right. the 2011. And right. And so I'm like, well, wow. it's it's worth a watch. And I'll tell to jump on these two real quick. Yeah. It's worth a watch. It's not my favorite. We'll do a top five. I wonder what oh, the top six, actually. The six you've seen and the other six yes. that I'll mention besides these two. I'll kind of rank mine a little bit. It's, sure. it's not one of my favorites. Um, sure. It's it's good. It doesn't. It can't recapture the magic of the first one. And it's it's really weird because it's one of those movies, and I don't know if you've ever seen a movie where all the pieces are there. Like every, You look at the cast mm-hmm. and you're like, this cast is phenomenal. The story yeah. is there. Everything works. It just right. doesn't quite work. Like it's well. not quite there. 
there's yeah. a movie that I watched, and I, I don't remember the name of it. Um, this was a couple of years ago, and it made me angry because, and this has nothing to do with Disney, but it's a movie that starred Alan Ruckman, Colin Firth, and Stanley Tucci. And the movie was terrible. And I'm like, how do you have Alan Ruckman, Stanley Tucci, and Colin Firth in the same That'd film? That would be awful. And you blow it. Um, how? He- Heather wow. Graham is also in this movie, and she's great, but her character is, doesn't even talk until halfway through it. So it's not even like she ruins the movie. It's just, it's such a bad film, and I'm like, how do you ruin this? And Muppets Most Wanted is by far much better than that movie, and it's it's a, it's not a bad film. It just it doesn't quite pull it together. Because that I had a great to, cast, too. You know, And I would be interested, actually, in you seeing that, just to get your impressions yeah. of, you know, okay, what's missing is dot, 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 because I feel like there was just right. one little something, something mm-hmm. missing. Um, sure. Muppet Treasure Island, I, I just wasn't a fan. Uh, the music was by Hans Zimmer, who was this Academy mm-hmm. Award winning, incredible, incredible uh, musician. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the music was there. It was the story of, of, of Muppet Treasure Island. Um, but f- as far as the six remaining, honestly, if I have to rank these number six for me, number six is going to be Muppets from Space. I know people who live and die by this movie. They love this movie. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't. It's not, I don't, it's not good. See, um, it's not okay. I haven't so I'm, seen it. <laughs> it's not. I'm gonna say it's not a. It's not a terrible film, mm-hmm. right? It's just not a movie that I like. Uh, I, I'm not gonna yeah. besmirch people who love this movie, and if you like it, great. It's just not a movie that I like. Yeah, that's right. Because you've seen Treasure Island, you just haven't seen my before. I thought right, right. Um, I didn't come too much. And so I'm assuming the way you're talking, that's gonna be like number six on your that's list. That's my number six. six. Yeah. Yeah, so, like it's it's fine. It's mm-hmm. I enjoy the story of Treasure Island. I'll enjoy the Muppets. If it's on, like, fine, but I'm not going to, like, go out of my way to watch it again, I guess. Right. You know, it's, well, like, it's, it's fine. It's it's one of those two, and maybe it's a little bit like Muppets Most Wanted, where because it has Tim Curry as as right. the villain Who, in this movie, which I think he's a great villain. I love Tim Curry. Yeah, great so. cast. Um, Jennifer yeah. Saunders, a, a co- accomplished English actress, is in this as well. So it's a good yeah. cast, and it's just. It, it didn't it's quite come together like I wanted it to, so yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Same. Uh, same. Uh, number five on my list of these lists of, of films is probably going to be Muppet Christmas Carol. And again, I know people who live and die by this movie. Just, and you like it. You like it. I think a lot more than I do. It's just it's. I do. It me? I mean, we'll get we'll get to that later. Okay. All right. So, what's number five on your list of of the of the top five remaining? So number five for me, and and this is does not necessarily rest on its merits or lack of Mm -hmm. merit. It's just more because I haven't seen this one probably as much because it was the oldest. It's the Muppet movie. And so it came out before I was born. I love Rainbow Connection, probably one of my all-time favorite songs. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the cast. I love the story. Again, it's more just because of when it came out. I didn't see it. You were 10 years away from being born at that time or something. Yeah, I mean, I was... (laughs) So just saying it, it has nothing to do with anything mm-hmm. other than I just haven't seen it as much as the other ones. So right. Right. by it's, dint of that, it's number five. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> on my list a little bit later on. It has to be. Yeah. I've got the same right. value for it. Uh, number four on this list for me is probably, and this is where now you have, mm-hmm. from on my list, you've got the original three and right. then the Muppets from 2011. So yeah. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the Great Muppet Caper at number four. But okay. this is this is a hard one to do because it's almost like you're looking at the you're standing at a cheesecake factory window and you're like I know <laughs> there is my chocolate cream cheesecake there is my strawberry cheesecake there is my mint julep cheesecake and there is There's my plain cheese, whatever whatever cheesecake uh, did you say <laughs> tuxedo cheesecake oh gross um so no but you're like looking at the cheesecake going which one do I really want mm, I don't know it's hard to decide um but I'm gonna put my, my caper fourth. There's so much of this movie that I love. Um, I didn't appreciate the Miss Piggy part in the middle with Charles Grodin singing, Oh my gosh. Now that I'm older, that scene is magnificent. It's amazing. Good. And he's one of the few actors, I think, in all of these that holds his own with the Muppets. He's singing to Miss Piggy and it's believable. Um, But you know, You've got the whole thing where they're trying to steal the, the, the break into the Mallory Gallery to steal the baseball diamond. Um, Dame, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Diane Riggs is in this, and she's yes. phenomenal. Just the whole cast is great, and it's this incredible scene of they're riding bikes through the park. Yeah. And at that time, that was a visual like that was huge. Holy crap! How are they doing this? Um, you know, which yeah. if you see behind the scenes footage, it's kind of cool how they do it actually. But it's just I've got the soundtrack yeah. to it. It's just great. I, I, 
putting this fourth on my list, and it's hard to do. That but I'm gonna say fourth yeah. on my list. I love and t- t- do this list tomorrow, and I'm gonna change it up. Probably put the right. second or third, but uh, number four on yours. Okay, number four on mine: Muppets Take Manhattan. Okay, uh, such a great movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, and again, like you, ask me tomorrow. This might be in a totally different place right. <laughs> because right, right. I. I can really interchange other than my number one, I can probably interchange like number two, three, and four. Yeah. So gosh, Muppet and you're very good at actors. For Mm -hmm. me, I'm not gonna remember the names. I like remember what they look like. Right. On (laughs) (laughs) on the Muppets Take Manhattan. So who was the one guy who starred? Who was the human guy? Who in Muppets, Muppets, in Muppets Manhattan. Take Manhattan. Well, he's not yeah. anybody that you would know. That's the thing. Oh, is um, that why? I, is that yeah, why well, I know his name? Okay, okay so the, the cast and some—it's a five-person cast basically. Louis yeah. Zorick is Pete. He's the owner of of Pete's Diner. He's oh, the one. Pete's they Diner. talk like this, he's, you know. Yes, Muppets, yes, 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 yes. Uh, you know, it's show, it's Broadway, it's right, celebrity, right, right. you know. Uh, Juliana Donald was Ginny. Um, okay. Loved her. I had this tiny little crush, tiny little seven year old crush on Julia Donald because she was just so cute. She was the waitress that came yeah. in and kind yes. of, uh, you know, rescued, uh, rescued, Do- rescued, um, Do- rescued all of them basically. And oh, uh, oh, yeah. Piggy got jealous. Um, yes. Lonnie was Ronnie. He was the one who was the aspiring Broadway producer who yes. wanted to put the show on, was trying to go around. Yes. He's primarily a Broadway actor yeah. uh, in a lot of things. He's done everything from, mm-hmm. and he hasn't actually done anything since, well, no, he, like, He's okay. on Sunset Boulevard. He's done Sweeney Todd. Yeah. He's done Urban Cowboy. Um, a lot, kind of the, some off Broadway stuff. Yeah. His most recent credit was 2017. Uh, so, so yeah, that was long. And I just couldn't remember, like, because you know, I recognize them from that, and I'm like, should I know these actor names? Right. I don't know. Well, I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. But the list of of, of cameos in this, if this is 1981, 82. Are you yeah, three? You're gonna eight, you're gonna know eight, Art Carney. You're gonna know Dabby Coleman, mm-hmm. Elliot Gould, Gregory yeah. Hines, John Landis, yeah. Linda Lavin, Liza Minnelli, uh, Brooke Shields. You're gonna know all those names. Um, and this is number three on my list yeah. uh, of top five. So, is it, yeah, it yeah is. And, I just I don't know. I just loved. This was a feel good movie for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Like it just it makes you smile. I I loved how the Muppets interacted with the yep. humans, and I loved the cameos. Even though like yep. I was kind of young and like I know I'm supposed like that person's important. Of course, you know, like, of course. And it's so. got this heartbreaking scene where they're all splitting up because they all realize it's not going to work. Yeah. So they're going to go do yeah. do their own thing now, and they sing the song saying goodbye. goodbye. Going away. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like. Oh, they're breaking up. You know, and of course in my in my little mind, I'm like, well, if they're breaking up, that means they're never coming together again, even though we have an hour left of the movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, right, um, right. So yeah, I am There's uh, great uh, there's great music. Oh, the music is great in all of these. But it's yeah, I love that so one. So good. And like when Kermit gets lost like even the instrumental stuff, like when Kermit gets lost. Oh yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah. As Not he becomes an ad executive and he's like right? mm, the soap. What about it gets you clean. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> and then um, whenever they, spoiler alert, then they find him again in the diner because they hear him talking. And, like, <laughs> and Piggy's trying to, I'm the one you love. Like, and he's like, guess I could bring home the bacon. Ah! Like, and just, it's, <laughs> she throws him across the room. <laughs> that's it. I've had it. Um, I, I oh love God. the real world aspect of it because they're all in college. They're all graduating college, which I think, which I think is just such a hilarious concept. Amazing. One part that I think, and I haven't watched them on Disney Plus, so I don't even know if this is out, but Animal chasing the chicks around, yelling, Wama, Wama, chasing, and they're running and screaming. <laughs> I don't know that that's going to hold up now because I feel like Animal would get slapped with a Me Too lawsuit so freaking fast. I feel like Animal would get slapped with a lot of lawsuits. I mean, days. the comedy of it is funny to me now. Just watching it, but that's not oh. that's not this day and age. You you can't really do that. And of course, he turns around, no. he looks at the audience, goes "Wama," <laughs> and he runs after them, and she's running and screaming, and just it's yeah, not uh, not so much. You just can't not do that. Much. It, it, I don't know. Yeah. I just loved. I loved. It. And the, that's the one with the wedding at the end, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Course, and I love the wedding. And, the, and it, it brought together the Sesame Street characters because there's Big Bird in the audience, yes. and there's Oscar yes. Crouch, and they're all. And to me, again, my mind is blown because I'm like, like oh, what? Sesame Street, and it it was like my mind. They're now in the same universe, which means. In this Muppet world, there's a real Sesame Street because look at this, you know. And I've seen Follow That Bird. 
I love Follow That yeah. Bird. And of course, Kermit was on Sesame Street, so of course they're connected. But at the same time, yeah. you know, and and of course he thought Gonzo was going to be the the preacher, and, and of, right. you know he's like, I thought Gonzo was going to be the preacher, and she looks at him, <laughs> you know, and of course <laughs> they're getting married and whatever. And, um, That's so good. Great movie. It's such uh, a great movie. Number three on this. Well, that was my number three. So I guess what's your number yeah. three on on the list? Again, so nobody at me. I could switch this on any given day. Like, I actually mm-hmm. have arrows back and forth, and then I have them crossed out. Right. Like, I just can't decide which one to go number three. So right. let's go Great Muppet Caper, since we've already mentioned it, since I'm back okay. and forth between the two. Okay. Love Great Muppet Caper. Again, I probably watch this one more so than Muppets Take Manhattan, where mm-hmm. Miss Piggy is, like, pulling out of the jail bars. Yes. Like, <laughs> She's been in prison like an hour and she talks about when I was in the clink. <laughs> and I just like coming through the roof. Is it Gonzo that goes through the roof? I feel like. At least yeah, well, they're all like. Impossible. They're all like lowering down. On paper like, towels. On paper on towels. Paper towels. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes no sense. And it's hilarious. And I just. Because like, they're going to catch wow. them red handed. What color are their hands now? Oh. <laughs> <Now. laughs> uh. Oh, that had a great cast too. Like that, mm-hmm. we said the cast of that one. That yeah, one had Charles a great Grodin, cast, Diana Rigg, and, Grodin, the ton- yeah. like, it yep. was and those so cameos. Good. Yep. And I, I don't know, Miss Piggy's costumes were pretty killer in it. Mm-hmm. So I was a big fan of that. Um, that one just makes me laugh. I remember, I remember we watched that in school one day. Why did we watch that in school? It must have been Probably like the last day of you school thing. New York history? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't know. It must have been like the last day of school thing. And that's like a whole... that's a substitute movie where the substitute's there and either the, the, the VCA, VCR tape didn't work or they can't find whatever they're – and they're like, you know what? Just watch this movie and you're fine. <laughs> I mean like the – but like that's just like my memory is I as I love the scene in jail with Miss mm-hmm. Piggy. I yep. love the – apparently as Charles Grodin didn't know. Yep. Like the blonde dude. I don't know. I love the blonde dude singing to Miss Piggy, and mm-hmm. I love the scene where they lowered themselves on the paper towels. I forgot they were paper towels, so you said that. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, yep. <laughs> yep. The, the Mallory Gallery. Yeah. So. The Mallory Gallery. Like, just the whole premise was, it was mm. weird to me, too, because, like, the Muppets aren't felons. Like, I'm pretty sure. So. No, they're not felons, except for this, and they're breaking in. Except for this. Just, so. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, number two on my list has got to be the Muppets from 2011. And Agreed. to me, I'm just gonna agree with you. Yeah, to yes. me, it is everything that the Muppets. Mm. It's like I said, it's Muppets done right. Jason yes. Siegel, who I love as an actor, he's one of my favorite actors. He's one of those that I will watch mm. in just about everything he's done, and I've mm. seen nearly all of his movies, um, comedy and uh, and drama and whatever. Um, you know, he had this appreciation for the Muppets. He wanted to come in and write something for the Muppets, mm-hmm. and he 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 did it. Uh, yeah. You know, you have this story where he wants to bring the Muppets back together, and his roommate is Walter, who is this mm-hmm. new Muppet. Which I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of Walter, um, but Walter's his roommate, and I love that they live in this world where his roommate is Walter. There's, it's not that he, right. it's just he's Walter. That's their roommate. They're they're such good friends that his girlfriend P- uh, Penny, uh, Amy Adams. So hello, I'm sorry, Mary <laughs> Amy Adams. Hello, Amy Adams. Um, you know, this is why you Mary's, like the movie. Mary's like, do you love Walter or do you love me? Because at some point he has to move out and we get to get married, right? Um, right. And so, you know, he wants to bring the Muppets all back together to have this fundraiser back to the Muppet Theater. So he has to go out and find all the Muppets, which if, you, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see Gonzo's Royal Flush, which is an, a nod to yeah. what Gonzo was doing in the actual movie itself, selling yeah. toilets and stuff. Um you know, the, the, the Muppets are trying to reunite, do the telethon and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're trying to, to – they're getting way back. And Fozzie Bear is performing in Reno with the Muppets, a tribute band of <laughs> tribute horrible band. Oh my gosh, Muppet that's impersonators, right. which are hilarious. And, that's like, so the bad. cast that's in this movie, you got Jack Black, Zach Galifianakis, yeah. um, Sarah Silverman, um, you know, um, Jason Siegel, of course, is in it. Chris Cooper. Yeah. And I feel Amy like Adams. Are, Amy yeah. Adams, of course. And you feel like these are all people who want to be in this. Like, yeah. as an actor, if you get asked to be in a Muppet movie, you're like, yes, absolutely. I mean, just whatever I can do, let me do this. I will do yeah. it. I mean, it's just, it's like when Samuel L. Jackson was offered a Star Wars movie, and this is him saying this in an interview, so this is not me being yeah. uncouth. He said, I would do anything I could to be in a Star Wars movie. I would be Luke's slave if I could be in a Star Wars movie. I didn't care. Uh, and so you know, he has a love for the franchise. And so, yeah, with the Muppets, it's yeah. the same thing. So, I, And I love the story. I love the music behind it. I have the soundtrack mm-hmm. to this one. 
um, all coming together. Of course, Walter saves the day. You've got mm-hmm. Chris Cooper, who's the big bad in this. Tex Richmond, a greedy oil magnate who wants to destroy the Muppet Theater to get the oil that might be underneath it. Um, so <laughs> it's just, it's good. And you've got, you know, Billy Crystal and Ricky Gervais and, and Wanda Sykes and Danny Trejo. They're all in this as well. Well, I, know, I take that back. They were all in scenes that were cut out of the movie. Uh, they would actually be in Muppets Most Wanted later on. But yeah, but yeah just such a good movie. So your thoughts on, on okay. the Muppets and how you feel about it. The 2011 Muppets. Yeah, 2011, yes. Specifically. Yeah, yeah, the 2011 Muppets, I, again, because I loved them growing up, when it came out, I was so excited to see it. I actually went mm-hmm. to the theater to see it. Like, I made sure I got to see it in the theater. I loved right. it. I loved it from beginning to end. I loved the music. I loved Amy Adams' um, table for one, or party of, party of one. Party of party me one. Me party. Yeah. Me, me party. Me party. Going to have a me Having party. A me party. Yep. A me I mean, what girl can't relate to that? Come on. I mean, hello. <laughs> um, I just, the whole way, and how, I, I love Am I a Man or a Muppet. I did. Uh, I love that. Won the Oscar thing. for a best song, by that the way. I did. That did. With it Jason was crazy. Siegel and Jim like, Parsons singing. Yeah. Yeah. It was real. I don't know. It was really good. The Jack mm-hmm. Black cameo was hilarious. So I just, it made me smile. It made me, it was reminiscent to, to me of my childhood yes. growing up, but mm-hmm. also I understood the jokes. So that made it better. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I got the adult humor. Right. And you know, they're going to so, travel by map, which was one that, of the best oh, jokes I've ever seen because how many movies so have you good. seen where you see the map and you see the arrow is going from one place to the other as this, 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 as you know, it goes around, this right. thing is happening, whatever. And they're like, Oh, how are we going to get there? We're going to travel by map. By map. map shows up right. and they're the traveling along uh, with, and this made me appreciate yeah. Me and Julio Down by the Schoolyard by Paul Simon. I never even thought about that song until this movie. And I'm like, I freaking love this song. This is great. That's the song that plays during the map the map sequence. Oh, okay. um, and it was just this perfect blend of being what what the Muppets were to people who love them all their lives and introducing yeah. them to a whole new set of fans. Like, I, yeah. my, well, Campbell will see this one day soon. Yeah. He'll love it. Absolutely. And you know, Animal, I just remember, like, how they brought Animal back in. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, oh, we haven't seen Animal. Where's Animal? And then they bring him in in the anger management group. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> drum, drum, <laughs> drum. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That is great. And of course, so if you're doing the math, that leaves one film on my list and one film's on Jen's list. And the list, the one on my film has got to be the Muppet movie, the original, 1979. And I have, I guess I have a little more, more sentimental invested, sentimentality invested than you do in this one. Because again, the first movie I ever saw, my first introduction to the movies, um, Rainbow Connection, it's a song that just... It, it means so much to me on various levels. It's I'm not like, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's just, it's one of the songs that transcends a list of favorite songs. It just is. Um, you know, having these th- these characters that I had, I mean, I guess I had, I had seen these in the Muppet show, so I kind of were familiar with the characters, but it wasn't until the Muppet movie when I fully understood what I was watching. Um, having Doc Hopper, the uh, Charles Durning, great villain, wanting to sep- wanting to create the restaurant, the Frog Legs restaurant. The Frog Legs um, restaurant. Yeah. Broglie's restaurant. Austin Pendleton was kind of the, the bad guy who turned good. Uh, and he's a name that you may not know, but you would know his face. He's been in so many things mm-hmm. through the years. And, and I identify him with, with, with this. Um, mm-hmm. with, you had the original run of Muppet performers. Jim Henson as Kermit, Rolf, Dr. Teeth, Walter, Frank Oz, uh, Jerry Nelson, mm-hmm. the original Floyd, uh, Robin, Lou Zealand, Dave Goles as Gonzo, Carol Spinney as Big Bird. Big Bird was in this. Um, tons of cameos, everybody from Don DeLuise to Paul Williams, mm-hmm. um, who who wrote Rainbow Connection, Steve Martin, in a great, great cameo where he's on this date with, uh, with Piggy and Kermit. And Kermit's ordering a bottle of the bubbly, you know, and so Steve, like, opens it, and they're like, he's trying to, he sniffs it, and he almost pukes, and he's like, shall I pour it for you? And just, it's <laughs> such great comedy. Um, that. You know, that scene at the end where they, they got him dead to rights, and all of a sudden, uh, Gonzo is taking the pills, so he massive, he takes the, the jumbo pills that Beaker and Bunsen are, are, are doing, and it's so great. It's such a great, it's great a movie. movie. Not only of its, it's time, movie. but also it is a, and as a movie lover, and this is going to go way in the weeds here, probably more than anybody's thought about this in yeah. a long time, but it's an, it's a nod to old Hollywood because the cameos in this are just are incredible. And if you're a fan of old Hollywood, mm-hmm. you've got your Ed, Edgar Bergman and your Mel Brooks and your Cloris Leachman and your Milton Berle. And for some of these actors, I, love I don't know Leachman. that they were, <laughs> I don't know that they were much bigger than they were at this time. Milton Berle, nobody talks about Milton Berle 
maybe this was one of his Not last anymore. great hurrahs. Was it was a cameo in this movie? Um, and of course, the ending where the, where the roof breaks and the rainbow comes through as they're yeah. all singing. It just it's so it's it's so a good great. one. Yeah, it's it a is. Good it one. is a good one. That said, I need tomorrow, to rewatch that. Tomorrow, Great Muppet Caper might be my favorite Muppet movie. I don't know. It's fair. <laughs> so, That's a yeah, you like now re- I just want to go back to and rewatch it. all of that. Uh, you and Brady should pull this up and rewatch it because I'd love to get his take on the Muppets too. Just kind of like he, I'm sure he oh, would he tell lo- you stories of what's the Muppets. I'm sure he loves. If them you're too. watching on YouTube, mm-hmm. this is yep. this is his photo. This is oh, his wow. photo from right. Yeah. Um, which I have. It's the Muppets live on stage. Yeah. Yeah, is Muppets live on stage? That's awesome. So yeah, he was there. Awesome. He awesome. likes the Muppets. So, so uh, your, your favorite, to obviously, has to be... The Muppet Christmas Carol. Of course. Which I know was not during the classic age well, of the Muppets. Well, again, this is a movie, and I'm not going to tell you it's a bad movie. This is a movie right. that wasn't my It's a favorite, good movie. But, you know, you love it, and so that's awesome. Right. But, so, I, and I grew up watching this, which was always, like, a staple, was watching Mickey's Christmas Carol and Muppet Christmas Carol after, of course, it came on. Because it right. was, what, was this, 1992? Was this 92, did we say? I think yeah, it was, 92. Mm-hmm. It was early 90s. It was early 90s. So I thought Michael Caine in this, he's still my favorite Scrooge. Michael Caine wow. is hands down my favorite Scrooge. It, uh, aside from the whole Bill Murray Scrooge thing, that doesn't count of because course, that's a different. Course. Sorry, that's not a real. Yeah. Christmas well, he's though. not Scrooge uh, in that one anyway. Correct. Well, that's true. But mm-hmm. still, he's the idea of the Scrooge. Um, I love Sir Michael Caine in this. I think he interacts beautifully with the Muppets. If we were mm-hmm. talking about like how the humans interact with the Muppets. I love Statler and Waldorf as the ghosts. <laughs> as Marley. <laughs> right? It must be just one Marley, but we're Marley and Marley. <laughs> See, I'm not familiar with that familiar with the music because I haven't seen oh, that in so long. Listen, there are so. it's so quotable. It's so quotable. And like Tiny Tim, who's one of like, you know, occasionally you see Piggy and Kermit's like kids or whatever, mm, and there's like right. little pigs and little <laughs> the cute, the cute. It was it was and was it Robin playing Tiny Tim? Yeah, Robin was playing Tiny Tim. Robin, yeah, his, yeah. his nephew. Yeah. Robin, the nephew. But it just like they make him and Tiny Tim, who did not die. That's you know like Gonzo. <laughs> he's all these the jelly beans and Rizzo the rat. Light the lamp, not the rat. Light the lamp, not the rat. I mean, I <laughs> quote this movie so many times, and so does Brady. Like that's I so think funny. It's so funny. Fezziwig. Becoming Fozzy Wigs. I mean, mm-hmm. Sam the Eagle as the British. It is the American way. <laughs> it is the British way. <laughs> like, that is so, so many great. gems. I love it. So many gems in the movie. So the only thing, that, and even Bean Bunny makes an appearance in that one. So I love that. I love it. I I, I go back to. Um, I mean, none of the Muppet movies to me are bad. There's just ones that I like more than yeah. others. And I think it's more Muppet performers than anything else. I'm a, I am have a fondness sure. for Henson as Kermit. And it's one of, of those course. things I'll have to get over because obviously Henson is never doing <laughs> Kermit again. Um, Steve Whitmire actually did Kermit in this one. And he actually also did uh, Rizzo, uh, Beaker, Bean, and mm. Miss Piggy. No, uh, Frank Oz did Miss Piggy. So this is still some of the original Muppet performers. Um, a lot of them okay. are, are are newer now when you hear the, the, the voices and stuff. Um but yeah. uh, this was the first one released, I think, after Jim Henson's death. And I think this is one that, like, yeah. I don't know. that the, I think they were working on it while it, uh, while he died. But at the same time, you know. Anyway, it's got a good Rotten Tomato score. It's like 76% on it. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously, looking at the list, I think Muppets from Space is the least popular. It's 63%. The Muppet movie yeah. is 88%. And the Muppets from 2011 is 95%. If that tells you anything oh, wow. about the fans thing. So, yeah. Wow. So, so, any final thoughts on the Muppets? Um, any Any... Anything, let's say, okay, so Josh calls you up and says, Hey, Jen, you know we love Upon a Star. We're taking your words. We're taking your advice. What do we need to do with the Muppets? Give me, like, one thing I need to do with the Muppets I need to put in production, like, right now. Um, Gosh, one thing with the Muppets that they have to put, like, to put in production today. Or whatever. Just one thing with the Muppets. Just to, to, to sign the paperwork today or tomorrow bring, and get it going. Bring back the Muppet Show. Bring back the Muppet Show. That would be cool. Like, I mean, you mean in the could, parks or like, the, sh- the the television show? I, I feel like you could do both. Like, bring back the television show because mm-hmm. then you could pull the IP into, like, Hollywood Studios, right. like, where the American Idol Adventure right. was or, or whatever, right. whatever that, you know. But bring it back because the, that was show was so popular in the 70s. I feel like you could recreate it now. And, like, you could keep, you know, like. Uh, right. Like well, I think they, well, they tried this a couple of times. And it's but kind of been a disaster. Tried, they tried to they do the Muppets. Do and not do the Muppets, if it makes any sense. 
Um, and they did. And I remember that. And it wasn't good because they tried, no. they made them like cynical and not. Yep. It, yeah. there it were, has to be like the Muppet show. Yeah. And so there's, okay. So there's, there's four shows. There's the Muppets tonight, which was in uh, mid nineties, lasted two years on ABC. There was the Muppets TV, which lasted like two months. Um, mm-hmm. I don't even know where you could find, where you could find that. There was the Muppets from 2015 to 2016. And that was mm-hmm. the one where, again, you're right. They tried to put, put them not only modern day, but also they were, they were adult Muppets. Yeah. If like the premise was they were this talk show. And so you were seeing behind the scenes of the talk show. Yeah. And it wasn't good. It wasn't it took, good. Like it took everything away from the, you wanted from the Muppets and just, yeah. I don't want to see cynical. I want to see Seinfeld being cynical. I don't want to see the Muppets being cynical. Correct. Right um, Correct. And then they did the Muppets now on Disney plus, which I haven't seen yeah. any of, honestly. And they've got one coming up called the Muppets either. Mayhem. So they've tried so. to do a, a variety of things yeah. and some just haven't worked. Uh, I agree. Put the Muppets back in the park. I, I think you do. Honestly, I think you start small with, the Muppets, like you did yeah. with, with Liberty Square, the Muppets, his, great Muppets, and great moments in history with the Muppets. I feel mm-hmm. like you could do that in two weeks. Like you could get that yeah. going again easy. I feel like that's your first step. Yeah. See how popular it is. Put it in a place where people can have some shade. So mm-hmm. obviously, don't put it in Toy Story Land. Um, put it somewhere where people can see it. And you know, and yeah. maybe American Adventure. Do that in Epcot around the side of the pavilion where, you know, outside of the Regal Eagle. Which if Sam the Eagle is your your mascot, or make it a dinner show for regal eagle make it like cosmic rays where you go in there and you eat and you can every every 30 minutes or on the hour top of the hour whatever they do shows in there and so that way no matter when you're coming in during before during right after your meal you'll have the chance to see the muppets and do like four or five different 10 minute segments or whatever Mm. it'd be great it'd be fantastic so very cool that's the muppet show that'd be awesome all right jen so where can we find you online to follow all your great adventures um, at upon a star Jen, and then my personal Instagram is at Jen underscore Novotny. Don't forget, also follow upon a star travel. Absolutely, at upon a star travel. Yes, everywhere. Uh, our girl Meredith TikTok. is doing phenomenal things on TikTok with upon a star. Yes, she uh, is. upon a star. It's they're so fun. They're so simple, like ten and twenty second little so, clips, but they're so great. They're so cute. Um, upon a star on Instagram. That's you can yeah. find find the reels and stuff like that as well. Also follow me at the Magic on a Dollar on Instagram. Follow me Magic on a Dollar Facebook. Uh, you can follow me, um, Facebook Magic on a Dollar and Disney on a Dollar. And, of course, I'm all the user type places, as well as the MSE podcast at gmail.com. That's our email address. Yeah. Uh, at dot com is, uh, uh, is our website. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and all the fun type places as well. So we have gone way long today, which is awesome. But um, but it's been a fun conversation. Jen, this has been great. Yeah. This has been great. Uh, so it's until good. next week. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Go, Jen, go watch the Muppet movie. That's your assignment this weekend. All right. Go watch the Muppet movie. Uh, take two hours, stop working, and just sit in front of the couch and watch it. <laughs> or the Muppet was most wanted. Make it a double feature. That's fine. Do that, too. Uh, I might take in a Muppet movie myself. Until then, don't forget to thank your Phoenicians. Meep, meep, meep. Thank you for listening to the Main Street Electrical Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The MSE Podcast. Or visit our website at themsepodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe and may all your wishes come true.